hello all <coughs> so <coughs> sorry good afternoon to all am i audible yes so have you all reached the college sir i'm reaching at 19 That's why the attendance will be low, I think. Yes. Okay, so I won't go so much today because I know the attendance will be low because of this shifting. Let's wait for two more minutes, then we'll start. That's all we do. Any any doubts from from the previous classes? Then you can just. Till now, let me um, give you a brief of what was taught. Okay, so we uh, found out what will be the equilibrium state, the unstable or stable systems, and then the then we managed to judge which one will be stable and which one will not be stable. Then we learned this four quadrant operation specific specifically to a lift. A lift has this four quadrant operation by default, and we learned in which case the four quadrants will be happening. Then we saw different mechanisms for coupling the motor to the load, in which the gear, V belt, screws, and all such of sorts of this is the V belt. This is the rack and pinion method. And all these things are coming now. Lecture eight, we will discuss about the moment of inertia. Why is it important, and how we have to calculate the total moment of inertia of a load and a motor system, so that we can have a perfect matching of the load to the motor or the motor to the load. So I'll be waiting two more minutes. I think two minutes are over. So. Let me start now. And how many are there? It's only seven with six people are only there. Okay, so should we wait two more minutes? Can anyone answer? Should we wait two more minutes? Or we can start. No, no. Okay. Okay. So let's start. Uh, yes. So this diagram, I think, uh, doesn't look so much nice. So people might be failing to understand it. So let me clarify that. Uh, yeah. So this is the motor part, right? this will be driving the load here right but in between the load and the motor there is a coupling right so this coupling will be this this will be a gear based coupling now this gear has some weight right it has some weight or no yes yes it has some weight it has a mm. mass it has some weight right and there, and there will be certain frictional loss also there will be certain friction and loss also depending mm -hmm. upon which kind of gear and all the lubricants are there it will it will be some have some friction and losses obviously so all this we are accounting for these parameters so the load torque to drive this would be tl not which will be uh, for this part and the speed will be omega m here so speed is omega m here and this side say it is 500 rpm and say it has a 10 is to 1 ratio say it will be 5000 rpm right so this side speed is omega m1 this is as per just uh, let me just clear up okay so the total moment of inertia on the left side of the gear is j not right it's j not and the moment of inertia of the load is j1 so we are to calculate the equivalent moment of inertia right 
we have to calculate this moment of inertia equivalent now this cannot be simply j0 plus j1 right can this be such this cannot be j j0 plus j1 because both of them are rotating at different speeds right yes yes so what we need we need to equi make the equivalence of the kinetic energies no you know i think this moment of inertia comes from what kinetic energy equation like half mv square this is for the linear motion and what we have for the, the rotation the rotation motion j m uh, j omega square mm. is it not so this is for the rotational yeah. right yes. so that's why we have to calculate this so let me show you uh, so where we have a constant known as gear ratio so we have gear ratio which is omega m1 by omega m is equals to a suppose right so omega m1 by omega m is what this one this is the gear ratio here we have called it a1 or a whatever it is it is a constant gear ratio right so now let me write let me write the equation for this so the equation will be c this is half j equivalent means total omega m square we are referring the speed to the motor side right we are not referring the speed to the load side why we are calculating everything with respect to the motor side why right? because that's what we are designing na if you are studying electric drives we are trying to design the motor we are trying to make an approximation for the motor rating required so that's why we will refer everything to the motor side so that's simple sense so half j equivalent omega m square is equals to what half j not omega m square that's for the left side of the gear so this is for the left side of the gear right and for the right side toward of the gear we have plus half j1 omega m1 square is it not so yes sir so what can we do we can cut out these halves sorry we can cut out these halves so what is what are we left out with so let me go to a screen yeah so half j equivalent to omega m square is equals to half j not omega m square plus half j1 omega m1 square so now half half and half getting cut out so j equivalent refer to the motor side is equals to j not omega m square by omega m square plus j1 omega m1 square by omega m square is it okay now we are putting yes, this sir. omega m this side yes. and this side mm -hmm. dividing both sides right so what we are getting j equivalent is equals to j not plus j1 and what is this the ratio of the two speeds right yes so this is governed yeah. by the gear ratio mm. this is governed by the gear ratio so this is what a1 square since omega yes. m1 by omega, omega two, 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 a1. a1 or a whatever it is whatever you call right? so this is the total moment of inertia refer to the motor side this is this so this one equation is done <clears throat> another equation that comes out is we have only 12 students i won't be going too much for today okay so one more equation that comes out is for the power side so power is equals to what omega into t that's the mechanical power equation is it not so 
Yes, sir. Yeah. So P goes to omega into T. So whatever power you are putting into the motor must be coming out of the load. Is it not so? Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. So what we can write? So whatever power you put inside the motor, that power will be coming out through the load plus some gear losses, right? So what is the power? So T L equivalent that you have to put equivalent load torque then into omega m that is the motor speed then tl load that is load side torque into omega m1 that is the speed of the load plus gear losses so that will be tl naught into omega m by efficiency is it not so yes sir I think I made a mistake. It will be omega m one. One thing. It will be omega m one. Anyways, let's proceed. So that will become T L equivalent is equals to T load so L naught into um, just a second. Just a second. Yeah, so this is the equation. So what we are doing is TL. This is the equivalent load torque. This is the the gear side all. So that will also be referred to omega m side only. And finally, this is the load side. This load load side will be T H T L one into omega m one by efficiency. Why is the efficiency coming into the Seen? Can you tell me why is the efficiency coming here? Yeah, any answers? Am I audible? Hello. Hello. Abhijit, am I audible? Anup. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so why is the efficiency coming into the picture here? See this gear, whatever you are employing, it's a mechanical gear. Its transmission efficiency might be around 95%. Right? So 5% will be loss. So to account for this loss of power also, we are we are dividing the load, load power delivered by the efficiency factor also. Right? So the total equation comes out like this. Total equation comes out like this. So this is the TL omega m. This is the equivalent actually. So if you divide by omega m, this comes out to be here. So omega m1 by omega m is what? Omega m1 by omega m. It is the ratio a. between the two speeds. That is yes. governed by the gear ratio. So it is a1. Mm. So what comes out is TL equivalent, so equivalent load torque due to all the mechanisms. Actually, it is increasing. Had the motor speed and the load speed be equal, then what would have happened is that T equivalent will be equal to the T load. But due to the coupling, it has some mass, some weight, some losses are also there. Some extra moment of inertia is also there. So that's why TL equivalent is equals to now T L naught plus what TL one uh, TL actually load side one into, into a, a, theta a one. So just let me write it properly. So it's TL equivalent equals to TL naught plus T load that is the load torque into T1 by N1. So this is the uh, transmission efficiency. 
approximately it is 95 percent for most gear ratio type of systems and then this is the gear ratio right so how did it come i hope you could understand okay so in case of belt drive what would be the ratio in case it was a belt drive system belt drive means v belt like this one what would be the ratio for this let me take you to the slide yeah this one what would be the ratio for this one a a, a one would be what So what would be a one? So in this case, the a one would be. So this is the diameter of this wheel. Say this is d one, and this is the diameter of the smaller wheel. Say this is d two, right? So what would be the speed ratio? It will be sorry d one by d two. Is it okay? It would be the ratio between the two diameters of the wheel. Yes. Hope it is okay. Okay. So, what if a uh, number of such things are coupled to one such uh, rotating object? Say you have a motor, and you have this gear gear connected to this load. then you have another gear connected to another load then what would be like such a such a sequence of loads so you have another gear connected to another load what would be this this would be simply this equation tl the equivalent it will be equal to the tl not plus a1 tl1 eta1 so that is the efficiency for the first load coupled then this is the next this is the next so it should be a sequence okay so now comes with a load with the translational motion so what do you mean by translational motion yeah what do you mean by translational motion the linear motion yes Sir, rotation as well as motion. No, no. Uh, no, no. Forward or backward? See, it's a simple lift operation. Is it not so? This motor, what will be doing? It will be rotating either clockwise or anti-clockwise, anti right? Is it not so? Yes, sir. This motor, when it will rotate clockwise or anti-clockwise, will lead to a vertical movement up or down so what is this it's this is a simple case of a lift is it not so yeah so for the lift also you need to have a measure of how much of load torque and moment of inertia would be required is it not so yes sir if you do not know how much load torque will be there how will you find the uh, correct motor i will find the rating of the motor that is required say one company wants to have a lift which can carry five persons at a time and you don't know all the design so you install a fat big motor so instead of 10000 rupees motor you go for a 20000 rupees motor and try to install it and then you have your tender cancelled that why because you will be overcharging the customer right so just for Five persons, you are engaging with a heavily loaded motor, right. and also if you are trying to install a five thousand rupees motor, that means it will be underrated. That means what will happen? It won't be able to pick up five persons. Is it not so? Is the simple case say you are cycling and. Uh, one big fat sumo type person is trying to sit on your cycle what will happen huh 
what will happen if a very big fat type of person sits on the back of your cycle your cycle will lift up right you won't be able to go so that is what you become underrated to that weight so today i'm not getting any responses i think many of you people will be busy to come here okay so we yeah yes the problem so we are listening so we are listening so why oh, wanted a response also <laughs> okay so now how will you find the j equivalent so the j equivalent will be coming from the kinetic energy just remember it the kinetic energy will be half mv square for a linear one and for a rotational movement it will be Half, half di square j omega square at that that is actually i omega actually and so here we, in electrical engineering we use j here instead of i so it will be half j omega square because i is actually used for the the currents so that's why we use j so if we make it equivalent what will come out so this is the j not which is on the left side of the coupling mechanism and this is the mass of the lift or something that has to be pulled vertically up or pulled down like right. so what would be the equation when it will be traveling so the equivalent of uh, this side that is so the equivalent of this side would be half j not omega m square and omega m is referring to the speed of the motor and what would be the for this side will be simple half m1 v1 square is it not so so the, what is the total kinetic energy of the system total kinetic energy would be half j equivalent omega m1 omega m square it will be equivalent is equals to half j not omega m square plus half m1 v1 square so if you cut the halves and all these things what equation do you arrive at you will want to know the j equivalent so j equivalent would be this much hope you are being able to understand it i'm not getting any feedback today so half j equivalent omega m square will be equals to half j not omega m square plus half m1 v1 square so if you see it correctly sorry this is the half so j equivalent we will be equals to j not omega m would be cut out plus half m1 v1 square by omega m square right so that would be the equation for the equivalent j moment of inertia right now we will have to find the torque so two things we have to find out to find out the proper rating of the motor one is j is a moment of inertia and the what load torque required so both of them has to be closely matched with the motor right so the j of the load has to be approximately equal to the j of the motor then only that uh, good flexibility in handling the load will come and the load torque also needs to be calculated so for a linear motion we have this thing uh, so what is the power uh, for the left side it is omega t in short omega m t l equivalent that is the total power required to drive the system right so for only the left side part what is the power requirement 
P1 would be TL0 omega m and for this side which is moving up or down what is the power requirement it will be force into velocity i hope this is a class 12 physics based thing i hope you remember this thing the force into velocity right so it is actually f f1 v1 or fp whatever f1 v1 and due to the transmission efficiency factor we are putting a eta here right so what is the total energy dissipated total energy requirement so that is tl equivalent into omega m is equals to tl not omega m plus f1 v1 by eta 1 that is the the uh, transmission efficiency so what we get if we cut out the omega m we are getting tl equivalent is equals to tl not plus this is f1 v1 by eta 1 that's it so let me go to a fresh one okay so we have the motor here which is trying to rotate and you have a pulley type of system somewhere here which is actually trying to pick up the lift right so power required here would be f1 v1 and the power required over here would be say this is p1 v2 would be tl not omega m omega m is the speed of the motor so what is the equivalent power so p equals to p1 plus p2 so equivalent power would stand for equivalent torque load tl equivalent into omega m will be equals to that would be tl not omega m plus f1 v1 by eta 1 so this eta 1 is transmission efficiency transmission efficiency so omega m omega m getting cut out so tl equivalent would be equals to tl not plus f1 v1 by omega sorry omega m and uh, we have this n1 also right so this would be the equivalent load torque I hope you understood this. I won't be going too much far today because uh, I know you people are out of your rooms today. Okay, so any doubts? Any doubts? I'm waiting for any doubts. Sir, previous slide. Huh? Previous slide, sir. I could not understand it. Sir, previous slide. Previous slide, yes. Is it okay? Sir, previous slide. Okay, I'm letting you go through all the slides that we made today. Yes, sir. So we started off with this. Right? We started with this. I hope this sir, rotation okay. means only rotation. Rotation without means only rotation. Without rolling. What is rolling? No, I mean when it rotates in a circular motion and moves forward in a circular motion, right, like a wheel. No, that is also okay, but don't uh, mix up both the things. Rotation means what to tell? Uh, Fixed uh, circular motion of. Say it's a, say it's a uh, es escalator, right? Say it's a escalator. So you have one wheel here, right? 
and one will while bed be here so you will fix up the motor here right or not yes sir if you fix up the motor here the everything is going round and round hmm and then if you have a fan here if you have a fan here what mm. is what is happening the same rotational. thing is happening rotational motion only right yes sir so then when you say translational translation is simple a lift just just feel that it's a lift mm, sir because i am asking you this again and again because sir i read somewhere translational motion is a mixture is summation of that rotational motion as well as rolling i mean it is rotating as well as it, ro with rotation it is moving forward in a circular motion see can you understand the operation of a lift yes sir so where is the load end and where is the motor and just look at the two forget all the terminologies terminologies will tend to confuse you right because these are all the fun of the words so see what what is the prime what mover rotating the prime move the prime mover the motion is circular right is it okay or not this is the prime mover right and where is the load side this is the load side mm -hmm. and in between forget everything forget everything in between and the if the load is also say it is a circle say it is a fan here so where is the load it is also rotating how mm. is the load and forget everything in between right so what motion is this rotational to rotational mm hmm obviously at different speeds right yes sir say this is at uh, 3000 rpm but the fan cannot rotate at 3000 rpm so it is rotating at 1000 rpm right so what is the gear ratio needed well, one is to 3 right so 3 to 1 ha 3 to 1 no whatever 3 to 1 that's the salt and thing so 3 to 1 that means what it will it will reduce the speed right so the tl0 is gears gear right is it consists of all this side complete. gear gear yes the complete the motor set and the gear set total okay it's not they see a motor also has a moment of inertia right yes sir the moment of inertia of the motor is because of its uh, shaft and all the windings it's, uh, if it is a square if it's a square gauge motor then also it will have some moment of inertia right and the gear will also have a mass it will also have a what moment of inertia yes sir all together is j not all together is j not and these and the gear the see this part of the gear and the whole thing is rotating at the same speed na so all together the speed is omega m but again this part of the thing is rotating at a different speed omega m1 right so the mass of the gear the all everything of the motor is together comprised and uh, seen as j not the moment of inertia of the whole set and the moment of inertia of the load side is seen as j1 right so j1 is rotating at omega m one speed and j0 is rotating at omega m speed yes That's sir it. that is the thing understood so why is it required j0 just try to find it out if you are trying to drive a big load it is very small moment of inertia what will happen you know the load will tend to drive the motor itself i'm not getting you what are you telling sir i mean why motor... is why we are trying to match the j not with the motor side why we are trying to have a motor which will have j equivalent right why basic common sense why we are trying to calculate this what is the reason because if load side will be more than motor will not rotate uh not so not so see it's a case i mean moment of inertia a tiny a tiny boy a tiny boy 
trying to trying to rotate trying to move this person in a circular way what will happen then think about it when he is trying to take the hands of this big fat man and trying to rotate what what will happen the when he will try to stop when he will try to stop he will not be able to stop this fat man right mm -hmm. yes sir then the fat man will tend to drive the uh, the small boy yes sir so why because because the moment of inertia of this fat man will be way much larger than this of the small boy mm -hmm. right yes. but if you are trying say you are deep and you are trying to uh, hold the hand of an equivalent boy and you are trying to move him in the same uh, you are trying to uh, you are trying to re revolve him around you now tell me what will if you want to stop that boy you will be easily able to stop it right yes sir so that's the thing oscillations will be lesser right and wh what about load torque you understand its necessity that if the load torque is not uh, you are not meeting up with the load torque then it, then there will be two cases uh, let me go to this if say 5 newton meter of load torque is required right say this and uh, you are employing a motor with 10 newton meter don't you think the cost of this motor will be way far higher than this 5 newton newton meter torque yes sir so what you are trying to do you are having you are trying to have a very reliable operation but at the same time, your the cost will be very high, and your customer will be disappointed to pay the high cost. So your company mm -hmm. might lose the tender. Right now, uh, if you have 5.5 newton newton meter of this motor top installed, then is it not so good? Is it good, right? Yes, sir. It's the perfect one. But if you go for uh, four newton meter of torque, then you will call it underrated operation. Is it not so? Yes, sir. So this will fail. Yes, sir. Say, say this is a lift, and you are trying to fix the lift for ten persons at a time, right? So if you are going for ten newton meter, it can pick up twenty persons at a time, but there is no space inside the lift. So the unused capacity will remain unused for the whole lifetime of the motor. Yes. And if a motor is running at not the rated one, it will obviously take in more electrical power. So its efficiency will be less. If a motor is being run at the rated one, then its efficiency is highest. If, and if your under rating operation is going on, then efficiency will be low or overrated operation then also the efficiency will drop as so a motor is designed to operate at its rated parameters at for the for achieving the maximum efficiency so uh, underrating will make the operation a failure too much of overrating will uh, be a wastage of money and cost and the loss of many other tenders also because this might not be a single lift this might be around uh, 100 lifts and if you are making a double approximation then you understand that the project cost will become double so your company will lose the tender uh, and so what to do to have a very small safety factor like 5.5 you can go for 5.5 or 6 newton meters so that will be good right? so that's why we are trying to approximate what will be the equivalent thing because you have seen that a gear might is required and other, other things would be required for such operations okay any more doubts sir moment of inertia of motor should match with moment of inertia of load approximately okay see it's a, it's something like uh, maybe, uh, Tell me a name of a very healthy boy in your class. Mm. Very healthy, powerful. Purnendu. Okay, Purnendu. And tell me a very thin kind of boy. Saurav Kumar. 
Okay, so if Sarukama is trying to drive to Nintu, what will happen? If he is trying to uh, make him rotate, and suddenly that uh, that Sarukama wants to now slow slow down, what will happen? Can you can you imagine? Uh, no, <laughs> he will run over him. Yes, and uh, if uh, tell me a boy who is equally powerful as this. Uh, Kundendu, what would happen? Equally powerful boy. Any other names? It should be servant. But, but tell me a random name Sir, which Robin. is equally. Huh? Sir, Pravin, Pravin. Pravin, Pravin. So Pravin and Kundendu is trying to go round and round. Then what will happen? He is holding the hand and just trying to rotate. So they are almost equally capable of stopping each other, right? Yes, sir. So that's the matching point. So the load and motor, they are trying to go round and round, right? So they must be having equal amount of moment of inertia. The motor cannot be very simple, thin, and the load is a huge fat load. Then it will be a big problem, right? So we are trying to match them approximately. Exact matching is not possible. So approximately, right? Is it okay now? You have the sense now? Why yes, is it required? Sir. Yeah, the sense yes. is important. No? Sense is in simplicity. Okay. So, um, can I have a list of who all has come to the college? Sir, the deep. Yes, and anyone more? Someone has... Yes, yes, yes. Milan, I would be practicing this numerical problem in the coming classes. So expect questions from this sector 99%, right? I won't tell 100%, but 99% problems for unit one will be coming from this sector, from, from rotational and translational. Right. So I'll be catching up with the numericals in the next classes. I'm just uh, not going to all these things because the number of attendees is very low and I know you people are shifting. So I'm just holding a bit slow. Yes, sir. Sir, from where can we join your like offline classes? I have no idea till now. Actually, none of us have any idea how we will have offline and online classes at the same time. So I have no idea. Let me ask my colleagues. Uh, um, sir, you can you can teach us and uh, at the same time you can share the screen. I mean, we can look at at the PPTs on the that projector, and you can teach and you can at the same time. I mean, it will be beneficial. Yeah, I understand. Both. I understand. That means the projector has to be there also. And it yeah, be... class. I mean, I mean, I mean, in the class only, you should uh, share the screen on the projector as well as to them on the Zoom classes. Uh, yes, sir. to look on the feasibility of this thing. I have to test actually with all the facilities. I have to test out that this is possible or not. Because, sir, we are coming here, and I don't think, sir, my whole net is used up in this only. So I think. Uh, is the co is the college not not providing you the net? No, I'm in my hostel right now. So how will I go to college? Should I come to the college for attending classes? I have no idea. Let me check out whether it is possible or not. Uh, I think uh, some things are going on. Let me see. Right. Okay, sir. By next week, things will be will become confirmed and clear. So please hope, okay. hold on till then. Okay, sir. Okay, so see you next class. I think tomorrow we have a next class. No, tomorrow we have lab. No class. Uh, okay, so day after tomorrow night. Sir, uh, any yes. idea about internal? Huh? Internal unit one. Complete unit one. So I will take around uh, three to four classes to complete unit one. Only you did, sir. Right. Sir, did, sir.
I have no idea till now. Twenty two, sir. I'm hearing that it's on twenty two. See, I think, huh? Twenty two. Might be too yes, fast. Sir. Might be too fast. Let me. I don't know whether it is confirmed or not. So you have to wait. Sir, Manit sir and Sanjeev sir are saying that it's twenty two probably. Yes, that's the probability, na? So you have to just wait for the final things. So keep keep on studying whatever I have been been teaching. We have only one PPT more left out, so that is for the thermal one and load equalization. So it will hardly take four four classes extra. So within four classes, we'll be completing unit one completely. So unit one will only come. So that's it, and then unit two, three, four is a separate story. Okay, sir. Okay, just prepare unit one. I have already mailed you all the notes. I think. Approximate notes. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. First of all, depend on the slides, right? Then the notes, and then the box. Okay. So. Uh, no, first of all, the PPTs are the uh, primary, right? The PPTs are primary, and then the box, and then the notes. Okay. Any doubts? Any more questions or doubts? No. no sir okay see you in next class